In this lecture, we're going to discuss the electronic band theory of solids, also known as the band theory of solids. And this theory basically describes the quantum states that electrons take inside metal solids. It describes the way that electrons behave inside our metal solids. So before we discuss what the band theory actually is, let's recall how chemical bonds are formed. So let's suppose we have two individual atoms. So in one atom, the electron that will be interacting is found in the 1s quantum state. And the electron in the second atom is found in the 2p quantum state. So we basically have our two atoms and we bring those atoms close to one another and eventually when we bring them close enough their electron distribution or electron probability densities will begin to overlap and that will form our chemical bond which will form our diatomic molecule. So basically the two atomic orbitals of our two atoms overlap to form this new electron cloud that we call the molecular orbital. And because we have more space inside this molecular orbital for our electrons to actually move around, that means by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, more space means that our energy will be lower. And so that means the formation of this molecule creates a system that is lower in energy and therefore more stable than the energies of these two individual atoms. Now, also recall that when the 1s atomic orbital combines with the 2p atomic orbitals, the two atomic orbitals of our two individual atoms actually split energies. So let's suppose we have the following diagram in which the y-axis is the energy and this x-axis represents the separation distance. So as we go to the right along this x-axis, axis, the separation distance between our 1s and the 2p atoms decreases. Now in the beginning, the 1s orbital is lower in energy than our 2p orbital. Now as these two atoms approach one another, what happens is the 1s atomic orbital actually splits into two energy levels and the 2p also splits into two energy levels. So basically we can think of this lower one as having an electron spin of one half and this lower one for the 2p as having a spin of positive one half. Now only the overlap of the lower in energy orbitals will actually lead to the formation of our chemical bond which will form our molecule and this atomic orbital interaction corresponds to the overlap of the negative one half electron spin of the 1s and the the positive one half electron spin of our 2p. And so together, if we combine these two electron spins, that will give us a molecular electron spin of zero. And that creates a very stable interaction. And that creates our diatomic molecule. Now, this is, the, uh, this is the diagram for only two individual atoms. Now we know inside a solid metal, we have many, many different atoms or many atoms interacting. They're not different because inside the metal, for example, inside a sodium metal, all the atoms are exactly the same. They're all sodium atoms. So basically, in solid metals, many atoms combine their individual electron density density probabilities, their individual atomic orbitals to form many energy splits. So because we have many atoms combining inside our metal, we basically have many of these splits taking place. In fact, we have so many splits taking place that for all approximation purposes, we can think of this entire region as consisting of a continuous spectrum of energies.
so that we have no gap within this region. But notice we do have a gap between these, this, these two regions, between these two bands. So we call these continuous energy regions an electronic band or simply band. And this is basically the band theory of solids. It describes the way that our individual atoms and electrons within that solid metal actually interact. The way that these atoms actually interact. So this separation distance is basically the gap energy. So that means the electrons cannot be found within these particular regions of energy. Now, let's actually combine this electronic band theory of solids with the fact that whenever an electron is found within a metal solid, it's as if it's found inside a potential well, a finite potential well. So recall that electrons in metal solids are essentially trapped in those metal solids. And we can imagine that the metal acts as if it was a rigid box, as if it was a finite potential potential well. So this diagram basically describes this scenario and it combines this electronic band theory of solids. So let's take a look at the following diagram and actually examine what this diagram means. So the y-axis is the energy and the x-axis is basically our separation distance between the nuclei of our atoms. Now in this particular case to save space we only showed three different nuclei. So we have nucleus 1, nucleus 2, and nucleus 3. Now our electrons can be found around that nucleus. And notice the electrons that are found closer to the nucleus are lower in energy and therefore more stable. Now, these blue regions basically show the allowed energy quantum states that are described by these continuous bands. So we have band 1, band 2, band 3. Now there are actually many more bands that exist, but to save space, we're not going to show all of them. Now these uh, blank regions, these white regions between our blue bands are basically these energy gaps. These regions represent our quantum states in which our electrons cannot actually be found in. So our electrons can only exist within these blue band regions. Now the highest possible band region is given by the Fermi energy level. The Fermi energy inside a metal atom or inside a metal solid is basically the highest possible energy quantum state that the electron can exist in when our metal solid is at absolute zero. So now let's discuss what this diagram actually describes. So the diagram describes the energy of electrons in a crystalline structure of a metal solid, in a crystal lattice. So we have our nuclei and only three nuclei are shown in this diagram and they are each separated by the same separation distance. Now the electrons that are found in close proximity to the nucleus of our metal atoms are pulled more strongly. They experience the strongest possible electrostatic force and that means they will be pulled very closely to our nucleus of the atom. They will have a low energy and will be most stable and that means they will be found very deep inside our finite potential wells where these are our potential wells. So the, the electrons that are most stable and lowest in energy will be the electrons found in these particular band regions. Now, only the electrons that are found at quantum states with energies close to the Fermi energy level can actually gain enough energy, for example, when the temperature is increased, to escape the potential wells and move freely inside our metal solid. So our electrons that are found very close to the Fermi energy level will be the ones 
foods that when our uh, temperatures increased, they will gain enough energy to actually escape into the regions where they can roam freely around our entire metal solid. The electrons here will not be able to gain enough energy because this corresponds to very high potential barrier. So these electrons are not the electrons that will roam freely, but these electrons are the electrons that will be found in the inner shells around our individual metal atoms. But the electrons found in these regions are the electrons that will roam freely around our entire solid metal.